Well, this is a pretty exciting day for Pixel owners. Our smartphones are crazy powerful, and it's always nice when we can do more things with that processing power. Catching up with Honor and Motorola and Samsung, do we finally get a usable desktop mode? We've got a little setup here. We're gonna do some screen sharing and see what happens. Android 16 QPR1 Beta 2. Just finished getting it installed. I have no idea what's gonna happen as you're watching this video. I'm just cutting it kinda in real time. I have to say I was super skeptical. We've been hearing these rumors about an improvement to the desktop mode for several generations of Android. I really didn't think we'd get an easily activated version for Android 16. I thought it would be something that would maybe come with Android 17 or later. But I'm always happy to be wrong when it means we get cool stuff to play with. I have my Pixel 8 Pro here, but if you're wanting to play with one of the Android betas, I believe as long as you're running anything Pixel 8 and above, Above. Pixel 8a, Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro, all of the Pixel 9s, you should have video output through the USB-C port, and that means you should be able to connect your phone to some other kind of display. Could be an actual computer monitor, a portable display, a television, some fancy XR glasses. I don't think this is going to be as sophisticated as Motorola or Samsung's desktop modes. Probably won't be able to do a lot of stuff on the phone screen to control the computer side of this experience, so I've paired my Pixel 8 Pro with a little Bluetooth keyboard and a little Bluetooth mouse. Lastly, I just have one of these crazy inexpensive USB-C to HDMI adapters, and that's how we're gonna get video through that USB port. That's enough rambling on the setup here. Let's plug the phone in and see what happens. And when I connect this, it's gonna ask me if I wanna cast or mirror my display. Mirror to external display. So I can hit mirror display. Okay, so right now this is just screen sharing what's on my Pixel screen. So what we're going to need to do is go into our developer options. Simulate secondary display. I'm used to this being like almost at the end. Okay, window management. We want force activities to be resizable. I've already activated that from testing this out before. Enable non-resizable and multi-window. And enable desktop experience features. I'm going to click that. And now we're gonna reboot the phone real quick. Gonna go ahead and unplug the phone, just let it boot up normally. It shouldn't be an issue on the Pixels, but I know on OnePluses, sometimes when you play around with the desktop mode features, it'll wipe out your home screens, and I don't wanna have to reset all of that here just for the video. It's doing its little startup dance there. All the new material stuff is really fun. I, I like the new look and the layout for our quick toggles and our notification shade. Time to plug it in. Ooh, and mirror, oh! So it didn't ask me to mirror my display. It just it just fired up the desktop mode. Now this is pretty cool. So when I was messing around with Android 15 and some of the Android 16 betas, I was trying to see if there was a functional desktop mode and I left a few little app icons, shortcuts, on my desktop mode home screen. My Pixel 8 Pro seems to have remembered that. That's pretty cool. But in addition to that, now we have this new bottom dock it looks like we already have better controls. I'm gonna put my phone down and get hands on my keyboard and mouse here. Let's try and open up Chrome. I do not wanna set Chrome as my default browser, but let me just kinda of see if I use my Bluetooth keyboard here. Let's put in one of the best websites someone could go to every day. I like that. Here's how oh, this looks good. It looks, is this already in a desktop mode layout? It is, it's already using the desktop site. I like that Chrome seems to understand, or the Chrome browser seems to understand where it's being used. That looks pretty good. I like our window controls look very PC-like. Our ability to minimize, that drops it right back down to the bottom dock. Let's open that back up. Let's maximize. That works nice and smooth. Nice little uh, animation as it pops open. I do wish we could clear this really skinny top bar. It's like we've got two strips of space here that I think we could condense. and kind of shrink that. Let me see if we move it to the edge. Oh, I love that. So just cribbed off of like, what, Windows 8 or Windows 10. If you bring your mouse cursor to the edge, it's going to half screen that setup for you. Let me see if I can just open up. Oh, and I like that the uh, the app drawer isn't full screen. For a while there on the, uh, the desktop mode, the Android built-in desktop modes, it would just be like this full screen panel of apps. It was really cumbersome to, to kind of navigate around. Let me just open up the Play Store, keep it simple. Opens up in a standard window view, but what I want to do is also half screen this. So let me move it over there. 
I've got two apps side by side. That looks great. The performance here is nice and fluid. We've got little back and home button controls. Let me just hit home. So no, it doesn't look like if you've got something split screened, it's gonna go home, but I can. Oh, I can open up alternate desktop. So I can open up a different desktop. And on this different desktop, let's do a little video editing. I'm gonna open up LumaFusion. But let me see, do I have, oh, I've just got my normal video rendering project. So let me open up this. We can kind of scan through this. That looks nice and clean, nice and smooth. Let me go ahead and play it and let's see. Yeah, that's, that's handling that really well. That video transition gets a little stuttery and then it comes right back. I like that a lot. If you hover over that, it gives you those options. If you wanna resize it, half screen it, I like that. Again, this is very Windows 11. And, and if you're gonna crib anything off of Windows 11, this is exactly what you should crib off of Windows 11. Now, if I minimize this and I come back down here to this multitasking, I should have the ability to go back to go back, there it goes. It took a second, it didn't wanna do it. But if I move this bar over, oh, that's really clean. It's not set at specific uh, spaces or intervals. So if you've got two apps side by side, you can kind of control how skinny you wanna make one or the other. It's catching us up really well. And again, a lot of this stuff isn't gonna be a huge deal if you've already been playing with Samsung Dex or Moto's I don't know what they're calling, it used to be called ready for. The ability to snap windows side to side or move apps around. But this is a huge step for Android. And this is absolutely something that I think Google is taking seriously now, seeing as how the core underpinning of Chromebooks, the Chrome OS is gonna become Android. I think Google's really nervous about some of those court cases where they might be instructed to sell off Chrome. Well, they haven't been told to sell off Android and that means they could use Android for something Chrome adjacent. This is just gonna be a huge win for everybody. This makes our phones so much more useful in a wider variety of situations. So one thing I wanna see, I don't think we're gonna have kind of rich file support in the same way that a desktop operating system might work. So for example, if I'm using a third-party file app, I can't just click on an app and drag it to somewhere else. Android really doesn't know what to do with that. Let me see if in a Google Files app, if we have something that might be a bit more uh, sort of environment aware, if we can move files around. Let me see in my downloads if I don't have anything too embarrassing in there. Oh, that's a pretty good photo. Let me see if I can just drag this to my desktop. I just wanna see if this is something Nope, dragging something around means it's just kind of following like it were a finger swipe in, uh, in, in, in on like an Android tablet. It just kind of moves that around. So I don't seem to have any kind of right click or contextual menu in this setup. I'm trying to find if there's uh, like a desktop view or a desktop mode. Let me just like look in settings, desk, desktop backup password, enable desktop experience. Those are just basic it's just taking me to the uh, developer options. What I'm really looking for are just a few more of those phone management solutions. For example, what I'm doing right now, every, every time that I interact with this setup, it's keeping my phone screen on. So if I turn my phone screen off, unfortunately that happens. We lose desktop mode. So I unlock, thankfully I come right back in. Samsung DeX Moto Ready 4, one of the big advantages is you're not sitting there roasting your phone screen, draining your phone battery faster. If you're using another display, this should be able to shut off. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we've got any settings or modes to control that kind of screen on behavior. While I can't turn off the phone screen or the phone screen just won't time out on its own, at least I can still do two different things at the same time. I've got a browser up in multiple desktops, and if I just wanna open up a little photo gallery, I can still handle that on the phone screen. We still have that partition, phone stuff is on the phone, desktop mode stuff is on the desktop. Go ahead and close Chrome. I just wanna try and open up a document. Let's see if, I don't even know if I'm logged into Office here. And here's the script from my most recent video. That looks a little choppy, but it is pulling it all up. So let me full screen this, and I just wanna see if I scroll down to the bottom. Hello, this seems to be working okay, even though I am not used to this 
keyboard. A primary use for me is I'm looking at little tablets and desktop modes, being able to just crib an article as quickly and as efficiently as I can. I do all my work in Microsoft Office. That's a pretty big deal to me. I want it to fit the dimensions of whatever screen I use properly. And I should be able to fire this up alongside like another video. Oh, let me actually see while I've got this here. I'm going to see if I can open up. Oh, see, this is nice. So again, Microsoft Office is already smart enough to realize that I might want a document and a spreadsheet open at the same time. And it's not doing that weird thing where there's one instance of Microsoft Office and then it gets confused if you're trying to open up different types of, uh, of documents. I doubt it's going to work well, though. Let me try opening up a camera script. Yeah, I think I can only open up one script at a time. So I can't open up multiple Word documents, but I can have an Excel spreadsheet and one Word document up at the same time. This is an incredible jump from where we were even in the last generation of Android. There's still a lot of stuff that I think needs little tweaks. I want, I wish we had dedicated uh, settings or menus or options here. We definitely need screen controls. I hope we'll see more support for things like pass-through charging. If I have my phone connected and there's power going to the phone, I don't want that phone battery running hotter. So it would be nice if I could pass through the cable charge just to make sure the phone is running more efficiently. There are a lot of these little things that still need to be cleaned up. But when we're just talking about being able to plug a device into a screen, this is so much more functional. I honestly didn't think we were going to get here this generation. I've been covering desktop mode since Huawei started showing them off years ago. And when we look at the population of consumers out there, when we look at all of the people who their primary computer, maybe not even their primary, maybe their only computer might be some kind of smartphone. The, the, the computer that lives in your pocket, steps like this bring not only functionality, but also just kind of a sense of dignity. You can plug this in and have a tablet-y or kind of a Chromebook-y experience ready to go for that singular purchase. And as much as I've been ragging on pixels uh, over the last year, this is actually a really big deal if we go down to the mid-range. Now, a phone like the Pixel 8a becomes a much more interesting kind of product. It's not a crazy powerhouse, it's not a camera specialist phone, but you could give that phone to a kid and in both a communications gadget and then plug it into just a little display at home with a little keyboard and mouse, that's plenty of compute power for them to get their schoolwork done. As much as I've been ragging on the Pixels and the Tensor chips, the Tensor in a Pixel 8a is probably more powerful than the chip that was in my daughter's school laptop this year. I really hope other manufacturers start taking this more seriously. They've got a, they've got a starting point now, like an Oppo or a Xiaomi. You know, they can polish it up and make it a little prettier and include all of their own customization tools or ecosystem connectivity options. But the backbone is here and the backbone is delightfully functional. I've been watching this space for so long and I've been getting kind of bitter about the lack of progress on this idea. I genuinely didn't think we'd get here this year. I'm definitely gonna be playing with this a little bit more, and it's now gonna be much higher up on my radar to see if other companies, as they start to put out their Android 16 betas, if we're gonna start seeing this included on their software too. I didn't know how this was gonna go, but I'm very pleased it's worked as smoothly as it has. So uh, if you have any questions, drop those comments down below. We can kind of look at some other things more specifically, maybe look at some of the other options and settings. Maybe I am just missing in my first look here, uh, some of those modes or options or controls that would uh, give me some of the things that I've been complaining about. And also while this is such a huge step up, what do you wanna see in a desktop mode moving forward? What has Google not provided yet that you would want to use to make this a more mission critical component of your mobile workflow. I want to see them tasty hot takes down in the comments below. This one happened fast, so I needed to jump right on it. I, of course, need to give that shout out, that thank you from the bottom of my heart. This list of names that are scrolling by on your screen right now, my amazing patrons, all the people over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. These people are directly responsible for helping us to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. None of my videos, first looks, editorials, reviews, none of that would be possible without their support and their generosity. Even down to the conversations that we get on Patreon, that helps drive sort of the future of what we wanna discuss and what we're trying to work on here on this channel channel. They're basically the coolest tech pals in the universe. So 
I hope you'll check them out. I hope you'll consider joining the community at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Now, you know where you can find me across the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little on the blue skis and not at all at the on the threads and Facebooks and Instagrams or that dumpster fire site. I'm gonna go back to playing with this now, but you can catch me on the next video.